This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Ooh, it's nice out today. All right, guys, so we made it back over into the city today. I wanted to shoot a little bit of street photography, just take you guys along for the journey so you guys can kind of see the process behind taking some of these photographs. But the main focus for today, folks, is to shoot this baby right here. This is Kodak Color Plus. It's a film stock I'm not too familiar with. And uh, honestly, I've only shot this film maybe a couple of times in my entire film career, if you want to say that. I will say though, this is one of the cheaper film stocks from Kodak. This is kind of like that entry level film. But the question that I want to answer today is, is this film stock actually good? Because they sell this stuff in, you know, camera stores for $3 to $4 a roll. And if it's actually pretty good, why not just shoot, you know, a lot of it because it's on the cheaper end. So we're going to load this up into the Leica today. I have the 35 mm Summicron, as you guys can see with the Leica M2, of course. And we're just gonna walk around the city and make some photographs, man. So let's go ahead and get started and let's load this baby up. Kodak Color Plus with the Leica M2. is Coda Color. So is Coda Color the same thing as Color Plus? I don't know. should be good to go all right so before we even start man just to get a little bit of a reading here of course we're gonna adjust using sunny 16 so f8 all right let's do this all right guys so i apologize if uh it gets a little windy here but 200 iso film man we're gonna shoot this again probably f11 now that the sun is out a little bit just give myself a little room for uh, a little room for error let's see how this goes <laughs> it's always fun shooting a video here a couple of weeks ago i came to the city to shoot a little bit of street photography with the rico gr2 and what ended up happening was i took a photograph and this was probably one of the only times this has happened i took a photograph of like this building and somebody walking across the street and there was a gentleman who didn't who wasn't even in the frame but he was really curious about you know, what I was doing. And so he approached me and he said, you know, what exactly are you doing? What are you taking pictures of? And I think he might have been a little on edge thinking that I probably took a photograph of him. And uh, <laughs> I told the dude, I'm like, so I'm doing a little bit of street photography today. I have a GoPro strapped on top, like completely transparent. And the gentleman was just like, I don't want you taking pictures of me. Don't do this, don't do that. And I'm like, cool. I showed him what I was taking pictures of. There were no photographs of him inside of my camera. So there was nothing really to worry about. But obviously some people are just gonna be cool with it, some aren't. But the main factor is you wanna be 100% 100% transparent. I know it might be a little bit difficult if you're shooting film for you. You're not gonna be able to show them the images that you see afterwards, but you, know, you, you definitely don't want to just expose the role and leave it all out so it's really good to be 100 percent transparent with what you're doing 
afterwards he kind of understood what I was talking about or what I was doing. And I kind of just went along with his day. I think the city's slowly starting to come back to its natural state. Businessmen in suits, not just yet, but uh, you know, definitely more people than usual out on the streets. All right, let's see how this film handles this scene right here. Let's see if it blows it out. All right, you guys, really quick, I wanna take a break and thank our sponsor for this video, Squarespace. Squarespace is your all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online website, portfolio, or online store. For any photographer looking to sell their work through photography prints or even offload camera gear, Squarespace has you covered with all the tools you need to get started with e-commerce. There are tons of unique templates to get your store up and running, and you can easily post your product photos, manage inventory, and have a simple and secure checkout process for your customers. Head over to squarespace.com slash kingjapes or enter promo code at checkout kingjapes for 10% off of your first purchase of a domain or website. As always, I will leave a link in the description below, and I want to say thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. I think you got it, folks. I don't know if I'm satisfied with that composition, being that it was super quick. Didn't really even think too much of exposure either. Got a nice subframe going on. The idea to utilize it as a leading line. It's not polished, but we tried.
Alright you guys, so we are back home now and I want to end this video off talking about my first impressions of Kodak Color Plus 200, man. Now, straight off the bat, I just want to say the film stock performed a lot better than I expected it to be. For some reason going into this, I've always had some type of, I don't want to say like negative connotation associated with that film stock but just because it was more on like the cheaper side and it wasn't a film that I was very familiar with it was a film the stock that I never really bothered with but after shooting it in today's video it's mind-blowing how good it is considering that it's still you know one of the cheaper film stocks available now granted I mentioned in that you know earlier segment that it could have been like three to four dollars a roll that's really the case only in like local film shops because they're maybe past date or they're just you know in abundance of that film but if you go online they're like eight to nine dollars a roll which is kind of up there but you can still definitely find deals on Kodak Color Plus and it's still considered the cheaper film in the Kodak family all right, man, so I'm just gonna throw up some images and talk a little bit about what I liked about the film stock and also talk a little bit about what I didn't like. Now, first of all, the first thing that I wanna point out, folks, is that this is a very neutral film. Neutral being that it doesn't lean really warm or really, really cool in you know most cases. So I shot this all pretty much sunny 16, nailing exposure every single time. And if you look at the photographs here, folks, you know, let's just pull up this photograph of the uh, the street view. You have nice detail in the shadows. You have nice exposure up in the clouds there for the highlights. Uh, and overall, you know, when it's properly exposed, it doesn't look muddy at all. Some film stocks, even though you expose it properly, it won't be able to retain much shadow detail. But with this one here, it surprisingly held up shadows really well. If you look here at this photograph of the Transamerica Tower, you know, kind of subframed in between the two scrapers there. It has a good balance between the blue skies, but also the warmer concrete on each of the buildings here. So again, it's like a perfect balance in between. And that's something that I genuinely like about this film stock. You know, it gives it that certain characteristic that you can look forward to. Again, man, the photograph here of the staircase with, you know, that beam of light shining down. A lot of shadow retention, but also pay attention to the bottom right corner where it's just completely dark. You know, this could be a good look for street photography. Again, I'm highlighting, or excuse me, I'm exposing for the highlights. So this was like F16, 1 250th of a second. Shadow detail is there. It has, you know, really nice contrast there on the bottom. And I don't know, it's so crazy to me that I missed out on shooting Kodak Color Plus when it was a lot cheaper. I remember this film stock being on like, you know, Adorama, KEH for like $2.50 a roll. And they would sell like 10 packs of this film easily for like 30 bucks. Where now you can find this on like six, seven dollars, nine dollars, I think is what I said earlier. So Find good deals on this film, ma'am. I don't think it's gonna disappoint. Also, I wanna point out how this film performs with portraits. So afterwards, I still had a couple of shots in my camera. And so I took a portrait here of Mackenzie and uh, you know, she's smiling all up in here, but this is like an indoor scene with just literally a, a, like a regular lamp light, I guess is what you would say. The light was definitely of a warmer shade. And as you guys can see, the skin tones are really, really good. It, you know, it's not super, super warm like I expected it to be. It's a good balance in between. You know, the green color of her shirt looks properly colored and exposed. Um, and then just look at the background information as well. You know, it, it gives it a very vintage look. I would say Kodak Gold is kind of like that vintage feeling film vibe. Whereas Color Plus is a little bit toned down from gold and it's more of like a neutral, more versatile film stock. And being that it's 200 ISO, it poses a couple of limitations. If you're okay with shooting 200 ISO film, then you know, you're gonna be perfectly fine. But when you are indoors and you are gonna be in, you know, situations where there's not gonna be as much abundant light, you might want to reconsider and maybe use something like, you know, Fuji 400 or any other 400 ISO. So I'm gonna give you guys my 100% honest verdict on Kodak Color Plus. I'm not gonna sugarcoat anything. I'm gonna tell you guys just how I see it. Kodak Color Plus is a sleeper film stock and I'm very disappointed in myself for not knowing that this film stock is pretty damn good. So 
you know, if you're looking for something that's versatile, something that is neutral, and also if 200 ISO isn't as limiting for you as it may be for someone like me who likes to shoot indoors a lot, this could be easily an everyday film stock. This could be one of your film stocks that you can just load into any camera and expect good results every time. And for me, at least in terms of the Kodak side of things, this is kind of the equivalent of like the Fuji Superior 200. That's my final verdict, man. Kodak Color Plus is a sleeper film. I would highly recommend you guys try it out if you haven't already. It's gonna give you that nice, classic, neutral, versatile film look. So yeah, that's gonna wrap it up, you guys. That is my thoughts on the Kodak Color Plus 200 film stock. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys wanna see more street photography, film photography, and just overall photography improvement videos, drop a like down below and also hit that subscribe button because we do upload every Sunday except for last Sunday because I got, I, I was working on a project. I will be announcing it soon. It's a huge announcement uh, and some of you guys may already know about it. So that's going to wrap it up. Thank you guys for tuning in. As always, Minolta gang. Whew.